Kaya. Welcome and welcome back, my guys, girls, theys, gays, all of my beautiful babies. Welcome back to this glorious YouTube channel where we watch things and take them far too seriously. It is the New Year's, my babies. If you are watching this, I just want to say congratulations for making it out of 2020. It is. It was a very rough year, and I'm very proud of you just for surviving and thriving and going to work every day and working out at home and for finding ways to entertain yourself. It was a very difficult year and I'm very proud of you. You did amazing and I love you. Okay. So with every new year, new things come out, new books come out, which I will be doing my 2021 uh, TBR coming up pretty soon. If you are into books, you should go watch that um, when it comes out. Um, there's new books, there's new movies, but there are also new TV shows and there are returning TV shows. And if you know me, you know that your girl loves true crime. So keeping in the theme with true crime, one of my favorite TV shows that came up that I didn't review because I didn't have a YouTube channel back then, but now I do, is Prodigal Son. If you've never watched the show, it is about a guy named Malcolm who is a criminal psychologist who works with the NYPD to help solve certain cases involving murders. But the reason why he is so good at it is because his father was a serial killer. Growing up, his father was a serial killer, one of the most notorious ones. So he works out of that trauma to solve cases. Instead of do watching every episode, because your girl does not have time with a full-time job. So I thought, hmm, what's a weird way that we could recap? And I thought, ooh, convoluted recap time. Yes, a little pitchy there in the middle, but overall perfect. So what we are going to be doing is we are going to be watching the last minute of every episode. And in between each episode, I am going to very convolutedly and very all over the placedly be recapping each episode as much as I can remember. I am so glad to have you here. I am so glad to have friends that love Prodigal Son because not very many people know about it and I keep spouting about it. Like Prodigal Son and Queen's Gambit are the two things that I'm like, so have you seen this? And people are like, uh, no, I'll get around to it. I'm like, When Prodigal Son Season 2 comes out, I will be watching all of the episodes and reviewing them. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. I'm sorry. Yes, she is. I, sh I should have been more supportive of you joining the FBI. I was stubborn and we lost 10 years. But watching you in action, it was exhilarating. Oh my gosh, so much Martin. <sighs> There's so much more I can teach you about murder. Yes. Maybe we can solve a few. Get his help, Malcolm. Yeah. Goodbye, Dr. Whitley. Hit him with the Dr. Whitley. Also, Michael Sheen with his beard. Like, bravo. My boy. My boy. Whew. All right. Episode one, let's recap. So we meet Malcolm. We kind of get to know a little bit of his trauma. We get to meet Ainsley, who is my least favorite character. I want her to stop. And you may say, Jessica, stop what? Stop breathing. That's what I'm saying. We get to meet Danny and we get to meet JT. Danny is like a queen incarnate and she is beautiful. And every time she looks at the camera, you're just like, stop like stop doing what you're doing gil is the officer that um came in and was the one that made the call for martin woodley malcolm's dad uh the serial killer um also known by the surgeon and so him and malcolm kind of have like he's like a surrogate father for malcolm they kind of have this like connection this crime that happens that's a very close to his father very, very close to the surgeon's mo and he um he gets called in by the nypd um, the head person over the case is Gil. Blah, 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 blah. Um, Malcolm 
chops off a man's hand to help him from exploding. And he was using the help of his father to solve this case before he chopped off that man's hand. So you kind of see how Malcolm is... Um, has some of the trace of Martin. When he's cutting off the guy's hand, he's kind of like enjoying it with the adrenaline. And it's really, it's just a really fun episode. Don't worry, Dr. Whitley. I plan to find out. Good for you. He came back? Yeah, he just left. Thank you, David. That's good to know. Let me be real honest. I don't know what happens in this episode that isn't a main arc point. So um, we start to delve more into certain like specifics of the overall arching mystery, which is the girl in the box. It's kind of this mystery that Jessica, the mom, um, doesn't talk about, dad doesn't talk about, and you saw at the end of this um, episode that he's kind of like, like, I will find out who the girl in the box is, and Martin's like, you should drop it. It's kind of interesting how this episode is about a family issue, and how it delves more into the family itself. So you get to know more about Jessica. Jessica's kind of tracking um, Malcolm, which is, I mean, good for her, because Malcolm is a real wild card, so. Can I say something? When Jessica talks, her inflection, I don't know if I'm using the right word, is all over the place. And I live for it, Queen. Um, she is like, Malcolm, how's it going? Like that sort of thing. Like her voice is just like, <laughs> you know, you know what I'm talking about? Anyway, we'll move on. As we go forward, we'll, we'll see how that, um, how interesting, like how memories change and how we remember things in such a condensed and maybe not truthful way, um, how our brain can kind of like rationalize it. I love the whole thing about how trauma shapes the mind um, and how he only remembers bits and pieces. I think it's wonderful. Anyway. In your little bed, Malky. Tie up your little hands, Malky. Malcolm, tie up your hands. Malcolm! He's like a nanny or something. Um, are off limits. I saw something. I saw a woman. That doesn't concern you. <gasps> Episode three, we go a little bit more into Jessica's side of the story. Jessica, the mom. Uh, we see how she um, takes care of her son and her parenting style. We see how his memory of the girl in the box is changing. At the end, we see that it's Jessica that pulls him away. Oh, I do remember what happens to this episode. It's the one with the drugs. Yes, it's the one with the drugs. Not with the one where he gets high on cocaine, but that's a later one. Um, this is the one where Malcolm meets the doctor of psychology who tests um, different fear responses, and she was like, illegally dosing her students with LSD and there was this other student who had a messed up mind who needed to kill her and uh, she gets saved in the end but she doesn't deserve it so gosh stick me with the needle and feed it in through my veins you know I hate when people touch people like that they go just like gosh like what is his hair even doing it's great it's been a long time. It has. Oh, Call me dad. Call me dad. She goes, <laughs> no, <laughs> Dr. Whitley. Okay, so we, we kind of go, since we kind of dipped into a little bit of the surface of Jessica, we kind of found a little bit more out about Jessica in this episode. Uh, so we just, we kind of go through that to kind of like, Oh, you think she's suspicious? No. Like, that type of thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is the one where JT, um... Which I think it's really cute. I love JT and Danny and Malcolm's, like, all, like, the little triangle of their friendship. I think it's so cute. I love them. Oh my gosh. The, the next episode is when he says that they're friends. Oh my gosh, it made me tear up. Okay, we gotta stop, we gotta stop. So, JT, um, his 
idol. She gets killed and they think it's a stalker, but it ends up just being her ex-boyfriend's bodyguard because uh, the bodyguard loves him or something like that. Um, not as gay as I would have hoped, but it is what it is. It'll help. We're getting into the camping trip. Yes. I'm so excited. It's real. In this episode, we get a little bit more into the girl in the box. Um, he actually finds some evidence towards the end. A lot happens in this episode. A lot of fun happens in this episode. So Danny used to be um, an undercover cop and she used to know this drug dealer and her and Malcolm go to investigate um, because somebody has died within the gang and it ends up with a shootout where a bunch of cocaine is shot and draw like goes all over Malcolm and he goes he gets really high. So as he's getting really high, Danny takes him home. It's so cute. They're friends. I'm sorry. I get so excited because their relationship is so cute. Like, I want them to stay friends, but then I also want them to make out. You know what I mean? You, you get it? Like, okay. Um, She takes him home. She sees that he has restraints, and she goes, ooh, okay, a little kinky, but okay. And he's like, no, 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 it helps me sleep. We see him letting Danny into his life. It's really cute, even though he's like, he's high right now he so is letting her in so it's really nice what if that wasn't even blood stains what if that was something else Disgusting! this is the one where we have the mother covering up for the son who stabbed a man to death um the boy gets um, admitted to a, a psychiatric hospital. Malcolm kind of sees himself in the boy's place because he's been fighting with the urge to not really kill, but follow in his father's footsteps because he's like, it's almost like he doesn't really want to follow in his father's footsteps, but there's this, there's this unacknowledged uh, pressure that he feels to follow in his father's footsteps. The main plot points are, number one, we set up that Ainsley is going to be conducting an interview with her father and then number two at the very end we see the Volkswagen so um beautiful amazing wonderful we love this show let's continue take it down baby I forgot how dark this show is not like dark in like concept but just like the lighting is very dark in the show <laughs> Remember? It's a hell of a camping trip. Yes, 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 yes. We love it. We live for it. It's amazing. Amazing. So this is, this one's called Question and Answer, which kind of gives it away. This is the one where Ainsley is actually interviewing um, Martin. Um, Ainsley is a terrible girlfriend. If you watch the show, you know she is a terrible girlfriend. Her boyfriend might as well be dog food. She, she's just a bad girlfriend. We don't like her. We are not Ainsley stands on this channel. We are Ainsley... We hate her. During the interview, you, you can kind of see Martin being composed, and then Martin... Um, unraveling because Ainsley is asking him questions and is accusing him and he hates people not looking at him highly. A lockdown happens because another another inmate is stabbing people. <sighs> A lot is happening. This one was so good. I remember the trailer. So um, he comes in, he stabs Ainsley's boyfriend who Ainsley literally could care less about, I feel, because she I think she picks up the camera as he's dying. So we see that, and then at the end of the episode, um, there's a phone ringing behind the wall. Malcolm tears down the wall. He answers the phone, and he goes, and the guy that answers was the guy from the junkyard. So all of these, like, all these loose ends are starting to, like, mesh together. It's getting so good. Not to stop until I've caught the junkyard killer. Oh, that's right. He was there disposing of a body. I forgot about this. And they have made it very clear. You're off the case. They can't do that. Yes, they can. I they can. They're the FBI. Oh, there she is. She's so annoying, but she's so beautiful. I swear, every woman in this show besides Ainsley is a queen. Oh, Ainsley and Eve. I know I didn't mention Eve before. Eve basically is Jessica's lover. The way they speak to each other, like, honestly, I kind of wish that they got together because they are... I forgot to tell you guys the plot of Eve. 
Eve is the secondary character. She'll show more importance later, but I, I kind of called her out at the very beginning when I saw her. I was like, uh, something's weird with her. She has a connection with the girl in the box. Sorry, spoiler alert. I'm going through every episode, so it shouldn't be a spoiler. Malcolm and Eve, I hate. I hate that. No, 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 no. Eve and Jessica, I love it. They're trying to catch the junkyard killer, not having a lot of luck. Ainsley gets broken up with... Everyone say it with me. She deserved it. The junkyard killer gets more and more vocal and he becomes more and more of a villain. That's pretty much this episode. So, and she's back. And she's naked. Also, he has, seeing like strong men in like tiny underwear is the like, funniest thing. Cause they're just like, their little booty goes. It's like a little camera. Again, seeing strong men in small underwear makes me crack up. But I need to do a costume change because I am cold. If I remember, I will do a little, um, like a little fashion shoot for you guys. <laughs> I changed into my big snuggie. Do not Stop it! I have never in my life yelled at a girl like this! I was rooting for you! We were all rooting for you! It's kind of cute, I guess. Anyway, we go more into Eve and Malcolm's relationship. They sleep together. He almost slits her throat. I kind of wish he did. Eve is such an annoying character. I don't like that. Anyway, so that's just a personal preference, I guess, but I it's not my favorite character. So Eve and... Um, I almost got her Lana Del Rey. Um, hair up real big, beauty queen style. Um, Ainsley. Totally different. Even Ainsley just can move on. Like, I don't want them here. So in this episode, basically, um, what happens in this episode? Yeah, this is the one where it, it, this plot is unimportant. Like, you can watch it, but it's just kind of like, this entire episode's like, not my favorite. So, I'm not going to go into the plot too much. Dad buy you that? Yeah. He's so handsome. Why are all the killers Everybody handsome? A good knife. You never know when it'll come in handy. You can tell my type. My dad says that too. Smart guy. Although his his mustache needs to do a little... Yes, yes. But, you know. Hmm. Yes, yes. Ooh, what is he covering? Is it a woman? It's a woman. What's in the trunk? I'll tell you. It's actually not a woman. I forget what it was. Okay. So in this one, we go a little bit deeper into the um, junkyard killer and how close he is to the um, Whitley family. Um, we get to know that he is super close. Like, they, he used to be partners with um, Martin. Yeah, and Jessica finally starts getting into believing that there is a girl in the box. And so she puts out, like, she does, like, a press thing where she goes, if if anyone finds out who the girl in the box is, I and she, like, she, she, like, has, like, a necklace that she finds. I remember that. I remember that. Okay, yeah. So we just go more into it. There's a guy that helps Malcolm um, find out that the killer's real name is, like, John Watkins or whatever, and that he has a grandmother li that lives, um, close by, and so they go to the grandmother's house. The grandmother's crazy religious, um, crazy weird, and she, like, would lock him in and be like, oh, not until you read every line of the Bible, something like that. And, um, towards the end, he gets knocked the heck out by, uh, John. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember this one. Where's Wilkins? Is he? Did you? No. Why is Malcolm looking more and more like that guy from Charlie's Angels? Um, not into it. And I want him to change it. Junkyard killer named John, he kidnaps Malcolm. We kind of get more and more into the backstory of the road of the road trip that he had. But it's we are hearing it from an unreliable narrator. Cause John has his own side of the story, plus he has his own sort of like his own sort of biases that he wants to put into Malcolm's head. Then at the end, John we find out that the place where John 
kidnapped him is not a cabin at all because they kind of did like the thing was like we're like oh he might be at the cabin he might be at the cabin he's not he's underground there's a tunnel that leads from that underground to martin whitley's office that was closed off and then to to the the actual whitley estate so he goes in he's in their house he tries to kill um ainsley and tries to kill uh jessica we see that malcolm's kind of faced with a dilemma he can either kill him or he can do something else he puts him in a box i would have killed him because if it was my family i would have slit his throat like no no other like let's be real if he tried to touch my sisters i would kill him that's just how it works. Um, I'm very small, but I have um, the years of brainwashing that true crime has done to me. We've ended the um, the plot line of John Watkins. So, sad because he was very attractive, but you know, it is what it is. I know you're there. I get it. It's a mother. Of my subconscious. It's also oh, that's right. You, yeah, that's right. He gets like officially fired. I love being ghosted by my own ghost. Ah! I love that chest set though. Queen game it much? Yeah, this is the one where there's the cult like thing, the cult like institute. People keep disappearing. Um, Malcolm goes and inserts himself in there against um, Gil's wishes. Anyway, so he does something pretty drastic that has a um, a federal psychologist or whatever um come in psychiatrist sorry um and then we find out that um uh, malcolm had set this whole thing up like with between him and gill to kind of um undermine the psychiatrist who is actually a mole in the fbi he's been helping with these kidnappings and this cult thing so yeah very interesting very fun episode if you want to watch if you like episodes where like the episode is like 10 steps ahead of you and you don't really know what's happening, this is the episode to watch. It's really good. We're ready for you. I'll see you later. Who let her have this job? Nothing like a wedding to remind a girl why she's single in the first place. Well, that was a heck of a show. What should we watch next? Cute. I love it. Okay. Because Ainsley has been getting more on her dad's side, um, this is, I think this is one where we explore more of her and Jessica's, because her and Jessica's relationship has been a little rocky, to say the least. So, oh yeah, so he is put on a, like, he's put on a mandatory vacation. Because the last episode, they were like, oh, ha, we tricked him because, you know, his mental health, but then Gil is like, hey, um, JK, you're actually going on a vacation. You need to leave. <laughs> Yeah, because Malcolm, like, there's a very specific way that you, that you, um, that you stab, like, right here to inflict the most pain. And I forget why he stabbed him. If you miss the target, the heart will fail. And no surgeon, not even me, can save you that. So, episode 14, um, we see... We're kind of following Jessica around and just kind of like we're following Jessica around because she's basically being blackmailed. There's a killer that is like, hey, if you don't do this, then I'm going to kill a bunch of people. And at the end, he basically says, if you don't kill your husband, Martin, then I will kill a bunch of people or something like that. But she can't she doesn't follow through with it. And Malcolm does it instead. If like there's a certain like way like underneath the ribs. So again, we see Malcolm kind of faced with the Kind of the truth that like he might be a little bit more like his father so yeah so that was that episode very pa packed full we leave it at as martin is being operated on so we don't know if he'll pull through i'm going back to my family of course my boy they need me my boy oh so good okay um in this one we see the girl in the box um who was a runner and we see her in his mind and so everything is going as as you th you would imagine the memory would be but then all of the sudden she turns out to be like 
the dream kind of gets away from him and she attacks him like she is aggressive against him um and he kind of he gets very scared um he goes through this whole guilt thing and stuff like that until he remembers until in the form of his young son young malcolm says like well you're always in control aren't you and he goes oh yes i am in control and he takes back the memory and he wakes up yeah, because we kind of see him, like, regretting his crimes, but then at the end, he's just kind of like, uh, psych. <laughs> Don't forget that we discover that she's, um, the girl in the box's sister in this one. We don't, like, really, really discover. We don't know what her purpose is, but we, like, kind of discover that she has her own, um, motives and bias. Yep, okay. Well, you know, I mean, do what you need to do, I guess, Eva. You. What if she locks herself in? She just can't leave. She just dies in there. <laughs> Stop it. Get some help. Yeah, this is definitely the one where there's the gang um, that does the high end like robberies, and Malcolm gets um, gets kidnapped by them or something like that because he's snooping around and then he uses his psychology to turn them against each other great episode jessica tells malcolm to invite eve over to a dinner and then um he talks about the girl in the box and eve you can tell she's like the wheels are turning so at the end of the episode we see eve go into the box and you can tell that she she like she has a connection with the girl in the box so the girl in the box e g i t b if you ran away, come back home. I'm sorry. Your sister's dead. But her sister isn't dead. Malcolm gets suspicious of, Aunt, of, of Eve because Eve is being highly suspicious. Yeah, this one is about the, the woman who had the baby and they suspect the nanny, but then the nanny actually ends up being the baby's mom and the person who's trying to kidnap the baby is the baby daddy of the na- like the baby daddy of the nanny like it, it, it's a whole convoluted thing so like eve tells um eve tells malcolm malcolm figures out like oh eve is that's her sister and um eve shows malcolm a picture and he goes yeah no your your sister is gonzo um not Muppets, but just Gonzo. Oh, that's right. Eve breaks up with him because it becomes too much for her and she needs to go find her sister or something like that. Her sister's dead, so she has no point in his life or something. Nicholas Endicott is a monster. Yes, he is. Yep, there he is. Shall we? Uh, he literally is the type of person... Men who are rich and get away with everything like you can see death behind their eyes just creep me out like i just want them all dead like i'm sorry like i'm sorry but i love the actor the actor seems like such a nice guy he the first time i saw him was in what did i see him in my best friend's wedding and i loved him in that but so in this episode you kind of get to see eve's sister and like instead of being in his dream you get to see eve's sister and mal and martin in the same room um and so like as he's about to kill her this is she's the woman that was taken on the on the on the trip um as he's about to kill her his son wakes up blah 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 blah. but she says hey i have a bunch of information that would be useful to you i was mixed up in the wrong crowd and she's like so um nicholas syndicott he shady af so you, you mm, i could give you information about him so incredible amazing wonderful mwah. do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head just like all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray all the leaves are brown okay starting shut up jessica that's impossible You know I didn't do this. I can break you under arrest for murder. So good. Okay. Oh, Idrissa. I haven't even brought her up this entire... Let's just take a second to acknowledge Idrissa. Idrissa is my baby from 
Gilmore Girls. She is perfection. She is me. She is like a fanfic writer. She fangirls all over Malcolm. Um, Malcolm's not really my type, but I would be the same. She is a corner. She is so smart. She is so beautiful. She is a queen. Her, Jessica, and um, Danny. All queens. All queens. I'm sorry. Oh, crap. You dropped this. It's your crown. Queens. This is the one where everyone is suspicious of Endicott, as they should be, because he is... He is so creepy. Like, everyone knows it, but he keeps paying off people, threatening people. Yeah, Endicott is, like, going on the... Like, he, he orders someone to kill Dr. Whitley, which is, like... If anyone touches Dr. Whitley, I'll kill them. But Dr. Whit the Dr. Whitley, like, overpowers him because he's the doctor. He's wonderful. We love him. And he gouges his eyes out, like, oh, I forgot about that. He just goes, like, ugh. I love it. I love true crime. Gil and Jessica are kind of together at this point because Jessica knows that Endicott is shady. Um, Malcolm knows that Endicott is shady, but at the end of the episode, we see him be arrested. This episode should just be called Endicott is Shady. Episode 20! This episode has one of my favorite scenes. I'm just gonna give you a little hint. Did you get it? It's my least favorite person, but my favorite scene. Let's go. We'll find the evidence. The yes, witnesses. yes, 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 and yes, yes. And you think, you. you think Malcolm's gonna like, you think Malcolm's gonna break and then you're like, made her annoying on purpose so that we wouldn't suspect this oh and he calls her ainsley until this moment and he goes my girl oh my gosh love it love it love it love it love it and this is the best outfit of the season my girl my girl and her outfit be looking so cute i hope that she is a serial killer in the next episode if she's not they're dep depriving me of sustenance i love how the next episode is law and order special victims unit which is law and order svu is the best law and order like let's be honest basically this episode somebody um endicott puts a bounty on like he's gonna have malcolm transfer puts a bounty on the head put puts a bounty on his head there was this agreement that happened between endicott and like endicott and whitley had met before they had had communication and the only reason why they showed this is to show that even martin is afraid of him so everything comes to a head when ainsley slits his throat and stabs him multiple times like i hated her but then like when she did that it came out of nowhere and i was like queen queen i get it it's really hard being in charge and we're super lucky to have you we demand perfection, <laughs> we demand perfection and that's not fair but we only do it because you're honestly like a goddess malcolm went to prison for killing eve's assassin and then at the end of this episode um towards the middle end of this episode we find out that eve's sister is alive and she's working as a veterinarian and that um Eve's sister killed Eve's assassin, who was someone who was hired by Endicott because Eve's sister knew. It's just a whole train wreck. All of the ties were like, like all of the loose ends were just tied up in that moment. That's the, that's what happened on this episode. I am so excited for next season. Next season comes out January 12th. Um, it is on Hulu. Um, everything about it is so great. I love how the dark humor is. I love Martin Whitley's lines are perfection. Martin Whitley, perfection yeah if you've already watched prodigal son comment down below let me know your thoughts let me know who your favorite character is um if you like this video go ahead and lick the like lick the like button oh no get your tongue off the computer go ahead and hit the like button hit the subscribe button it really helps me out and then also hit the post bell notification button down below to be notified immediately whenever i upload videos of me of me confusingly explaining shows and taking them far too seriously again i'm so excited that we made it out of 2020 i salute you guys and you have a killer day bye just like all the leaves are brown and the sky is gray.
All the leaves are brown.